glad you could join us today on Earth Far. Welcome to the program. I'm Ayo Lakasim. Millions of Nigerians do not have access to grid electricity, relying instead on polluting lighting sources such as generators, kerosene lanterns, candles, and sometimes torches. The situation in rural areas is particularly acute at only 41.1% grid access rate. And even among those who have access to the grid, 40% are under-electrified, meaning they have less than 12 hours of grid electricity per day. Campaigners are pushing for the shift for renewables as an efficient way to bring power to rural communities to help reduce the pollution rates. Unfortunately, cost is still too much for some to bear. Today we open at FAO with how a unique partnership, innovative financing and stubborn persistence created a model for localized mini-grid to supply electricity to a community in southwest Nigeria. Do stay with us. Rachel Babaride is one of the early users of clean electricity in Gbamu Gbamu, a town about three hours drive from Lagos. Today, community members flip a switch to draw clean, green and quiet power. The people of Gbamu Gbamu say they are satisfied with the services. The power is reliable when you load your credit. They feel safer at night and their children now study under a steady overhead light bulb. Baba da one liter sino kene ka pe 200 ni pa liter bi ta wa yi 200 ni one liter There's a difference because when we buy a liter of petrol which is about 200 naira here we can only use it to do little work but now for instance I recharged yesterday with 500 naira and we use the light overnight We have light at home it also powers the grinder for my business It's different from when we use petrol those engines consume fuel. Sometimes we might not use two liters for more than one day or two. But when we blend only pepper, they'll be light for three days. But now, if we recharge with a credit worth of 500 naira, we can iron, watch television when the children are home on holiday. It can last for up to three or four days. Customers like Rachel Babaride have happily switched off their generators and purchased reliable power for their appliances. When we were using the old grinder, sometimes the plug may be faulty, and so when we pull it, it wouldn't work. And sometimes it could be that something went wrong with the engine and we wouldn't know. Then we would have to call the mechanics to help us fix it. But when the electric grinder came, it made things a lot easier. We know the benefits since the solar-powered electricity was installed. Electric is a day. However, many customers' use of electricity has remained low throughout the first year of operation. The appliances that make further use of power have high upfront costs and are not available for purchase in town. Researchers have said at present, electricity supply investments receive 50 times more financing than access to productivity enhancing equipment in Africa. If end users are not able to obtain and use new appliances, much of this new generating capacity is at risk of underutilization. Taiwo Araoye, a cocoa seller, needs to know how the commodity is selling at the international market. This comes at a much cheaper rate for him with high quality mini grid power as opposed to a diesel generator. It's very changeable because it developed my business here. Yeah. It's been a lot of changes because it developed my business. I also use it to charge my phone, browse, watch TV, and there's a full enjoyment with fun and light. It's just security for me, for my business. Nobody can just come into my house because of the full lighting. Because I'm always charged, I mean, I always get full battery. I can so, charge my phone, especially when I'm browsing, it, maybe as that consumes something. my because battery. Browsing, it just consumes the um, battery 
something. So after then, I used I just watched the. Time also, I watch television so, to know so what's happening in relations to my business. Like maybe so there's an increase in price or not. Business. Maybe the price up or down. So just help my business. <laughs> The Greed at Bamug Bamu is an effort of local developers, Rubitech Solar, and the United States Agency for International Development funded Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Project. Developing mini grids throughout Nigeria, including the one at Bamug Bamu, is one of the main components of the Nigerian Energy Support Program, which is co funded by the European Union and the German government and is being implemented by the technical arm of the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, known as GIZ. Yeah, actually, GIZ identified five locations to um, test mini-grid pr uh, prototypes in Nigeria. And um, we have one um, site in Ogun State, we have one in Sokoto, we have in Niger, uh, Niger rather, we have in Cross River, and then we have in Plitsu State. So um, in Ogun State, we have Bamu Bamu. And uh, we know that um, one of the major um, requisites for um, the selection of a mini grid is that it must be at least 13 kilometers away from the national grid. So actually, Bam Bamu qualifies to be a place for mini grid because it's isolated. Currently, we have over 550 connections. Okay. Yes, and then we have um, that's um, above 300 households, mm -hmm. and then we have commercial outlets, we have productive users, we have um, public um, utilities like the church, we have the mosque, we have um, some other um, um, commercial avenues as well. Since 2010, the number of commercial developers has grown and commercial mini-grid projects are increasing in number as well. The success of these projects, which have implemented cost-effective tariffs and generated customer demand demonstrates the potential profitability of commercial mini-grid projects. We actually split them into different categories. We have commercial, productive and residential. So what we did was, we, since it's actually solar, we noticed that we wanted people to use more in the afternoon. So in the afternoon we made sure that we had a lower rate for people in commercial units. And since it's a rural area, it's a farming sector, they go out in the morning, they go to farm and come out late at night. So most people using fridge, barbers, they have a cheaper tariff. They will have a productive, we have productive users, which are the cocoa dryers, the millers, the hotels. So they will make it cheaper for them. They, are the, they have the cheapest rates. Although today's mini grid tariffs are high relative to distribution companies and the national grid, they fall within the ability and willingness of customers to pay for electricity. It depends on the usage. Sometimes I pay 3,000 Naira and sometimes it's just above 2,000 Naira per month. It could be more. Everything depends on my being at home. Today's cost reflective mini grid tariffs are typically near 200 naira per kilowatt hour, which is less expensive than the cost to run a small diesel or petrol generator set. Although these costs reflect the small scale and risk of a nascent market, mini grid tariffs are expected to continue falling and can be reduced by 60% this year. The is 175 per kilowatt, but for commercial, we made it. 145, 140 flat rate. Then for productive, we made it 130, 135. But we have a particular miller on the grid. We made that 120 for her per kilowatt because she's grinding. So she has a, a five horsepower electric motor connected to the grid. So she has the cheapest rate. So that's our, so do they have a time of use from nine to four? So all those rates happen from 9 to 4. And from 4, they, have the, they are back to their normal rate, which is 175. What we did when we first did commission was, we gave them free light, not really free, just to taste it for a week. So after a week, we started, started paying. We noticed that as soon as they pay, you load 500, maybe you switch, you switch on your, your AC, and on that, and okay, day or four or five hours, it has gone, and you're complaining that, no, no, we had to put them through, make them understand that, okay, if you're going to use this, 
it's going to be like this. Not like you just use it, it's not gen. It has to be regulated. At first, we didn't have time of use. So we had a flat rate for everybody, both commercial, both productive users, since we didn't know when they were going to be using it. So as time goes on, when they were more complained, we now said, okay, it should be time of use. Since in the afternoon, if we get direct sunlight, it's free. Let's not make it for a lesser risk. So we have people that want to do more work in the afternoon. We, we allow them to use their light. They don't need to switch off the light in the afternoon when they're not using it. Because, okay, it's cheap. Now using a gen that they have to off and on. So that was the idea. We started with time of use. Then we had challenge of, okay, because okay, presently I don't load. I used to recharge before, and so but they had challenge of, um, I okay, I trust you. I don't know. I don't trust the person in the community. So we had to educate them that okay, this is it. It is what you use. It is not. It doesn't. You don't have to trust me. I will not steal your money. But if I can show everything that okay, this is what you load, and this is what you use, it's fine by you. So we made them understand the importance and usage. Then they actually, some people actually tried going back to the gen, doing that process, and they found out that it was less cheaper. There, there was. A, there's a much, there's about maybe 50, 60 percent difference. The innovation, collaboration and persistence required to develop and construct these mini grids have established a template that Nigeria can follow to deliver the benefit of electrification to millions of people around the country. While mini grids may be the best and only solution for electrifying Nigeria, the development has been stunted for a host of reasons, including the lack of technically competent mini-grid designers and solar installers. To address this immediate problem and build a skilled workforce, the Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Project and GIZ worked with dozens of international experts to develop a rigorous and standardized curriculum that is now used at 13 training institutions across Nigeria. But of all these obstacles standing in the way of solar-powered mini-grids, delivering the benefit of electricity to millions more Nigerians, none has been as complicated and challenging to address as financing. Anyone considering building a mini-grid would have to find money to pay for both the solar panels and batteries required to generate and store electricity, as well as the poles, wires and meters necessary to distribute it to homes and businesses. In Nigeria currently, um, commercial banks actually have not yet realized the um, viability of renewable energy business. And, and because of that, um, there are no existing policies to support clean energy businesses in, this, in, in, in the um, country. But for those that actually support renewable energy business, they, they um, give or they require you to pay um, um, an um, unaffordable interest rate and some of them would also ask for a very short payback time and then um, we have others too uh, other other ch challenge too was um, collateral security in order to get loans so um, it's not so viable you know for you to actually go to com to approach commercial banks in Nigeria at the moment so that's one of what, the what, was, what rates are, were they offering you uh, most of them would, would charge up to 25 percent rates yeah, which is actually not so encouraging to um, project developers within the country, yes. Mm -hmm. To address this challenge, the Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Project and GIZ devised what they call split assets model. For the first five mini-grid projects in Nigeria, including Bamu Bamu, GIZ provided a grant to cover the distribution costs, which account for roughly half of the total project expenses. A German crowdfunding platform, Betavest, which allows individuals to invest and earn a return on renewable energy and energy efficiency projects around the world, then invested around $260,000 required to build the generation component of the project. Our future market is Africa because this market is growing so tremendously and the amount of people there that need electricity is the highest all over the world. Um, so. There is much money needed, there is much potential and also, as mentioned, the interest rates there are very, very high. So um, they need cheaper money and they need especially any way of financing. Mm, there is no solution, there are no banks there who finance those smaller projects. Only crowdfunding platforms are at the moment the solutions to, that um, 
money can come to African small and medium-sized enterprises to bring electricity into villages. Betterverse investors are expecting a 10% return on the investment in Bamu Bamu. Near the southern Egyptian city of Aswan, a swath of PV solar panels spread over an area of desert so large it is clearly visible from space. They are part of the Benban plant, one of the world's largest solar parks following completion of a second phase of the estimated $2.1 billion development project designed to anchor a renewable energy sector by attracting foreign and domestic private sector developers and financial backers. The plant now provides nearly 1.5 gigawatts to Egypt's national grid and has brought down the price of solar energy at a time when the government is phasing out electricity subsidies. In 2013, Egypt was suffering rolling blackouts due to power shortages at aging power stations. Three gigantic gas-powered stations with a capacity of 14.4 gigawatts procured from Siemens in 2015 turned the deficit into a surplus. National installed electricity capacity is now around 50 gigawatts and Egypt aims to increase the share of electricity provided by renewables from a fraction currently to 20% by 2022 and 42% by 2035. This is the world's largest solar power plant anywhere. Um, it's uh, currently 1,465 1, megawatts uh, AC that's delivered into the grid. It's uh, almost 1,800 megawatts in terms of panel installation that's here. Um, they, uh, it's divided into uh, uh, currently uh, 32 lots. There's an additional uh, eight lots still to be developed. Uh, which would take the park up to 1,800 megawatts delivered to the grid uh, and 2,300 megawatts in terms of total capacity. Um, it is th an amazing facility. It's uh, not only creating power for, for Egypt, but it's also, um, it's also creating a lot of investment opportunities being divided into so many different smaller projects. The Bam Bam Project's 32 plots were developed by more than 30 companies from 12 countries, including Spain's Axiona, United Arab Emirates based Alcazar Energy, Italy's Enery, France's Total Enren and EDF, China's Chint Solar, and Norway's Katek. Developers of the plant, around 40 kilometers northwest of Aswan, are guaranteed a feed-in tariff price for 25 years. A third phase at Benban could add more than 300 megawatts, though nothing has been decided yet, while another large-scale solar development is planned 45 kilometers north of Aswan at Kom Ombo. Egypt has struggled to attract foreign investment outside the oil and gas sector, despite winning prize for an IMF-backed economic reform program since 2016. At Bemban, developers visited by an international finance corporation team raised the issue of a standoff over a government demand that they collectively pay an extra $118 million in infrastructure costs. There had also been some curtailment of supplies to the grid as they waited for new transmission lines to be added. But operations were generally going well, and the Egyptian electricity transmission company was paying on time. The real legacy is that it's, it's really the driving wedge of a uh, private sector-led uh, investment initiative that can reshape the electricity sector uh, in Egypt. Um, this is just the very beginning. Um, they have plans to bring out renewable energy, uh, private sector uh, invested uh, across the Red Sea and uh, in, in wind and, and throughout the deserts uh, for solar power. Solar irradiation is exceptionally good at Bemban and running costs are low, developers say. Upkeep is largely limited to brushing the desert dust from the panels to maximize absorption. So we don't need a lot of manpower working on here. You only need uh, cleaning machines. This is operated by uh, Bemban uh, manpower. And only uh, manpower again for the maintenance and uh, that's all which is not also a big amount of uh, people. However, the plant needed a storage system, still a key technological challenge for solar power that surges during the daytime in order to stabilize the supplies to the grid. In 2018, a report from the International Renewable Energy Agency suggested Egypt could be more ambitious in its green energy goals, 
and aim to supply 53% of its electricity from renewables by 2030. But it said developers could be discouraged by complex administrative procedures and urged Egypt to review its market framework and develop local manufacturing capacities for renewables. Back here in Nigeria, mini-grid projects have gained traction recently because they provide an effective solution to rural electrification, even in the cities, in a challenging environment. Over the past decade, mini-grids have transitioned from government-contracted and humanitarian to a commercial model through which developers and operators rely relatively less on grants and government funding. Um, it is true um, Re renewable energy business currently, um, it's capital intensive, yeah, and that has to do with, uh, that, that's just because of so many issues like um, cost of importing the system into the country. Um, they are, we don't really have solid structures supporting the businesses in the country. Like, you know, in, um, in the European parts there, we have um, opportunities to even feed into the grid, you know, and then you get it back later on, you know. You know but here in Africa, it's not yet, we don't yet have such um, policies. So um, the advantage from renewable energy compared with traditional forms like diesel and, um, and um, other, um, other generator sources, it's, it's um, in the oper operating cost, you know. Renewable energy, cost, um, renewable energy systems, rather, they have little or no operating cost, you know. And look at the panel. Panel will last for an average of 20 years without you maintaining, you know. But compared with you having a diesel set, which you have to keep fueling, and then it's, it's, um, it's you know, you have to keep servicing, and then it's um, associated with um, periodic start of failures at, at times. Since 2001, there have been various policies in Nigeria to aid the takeoff of the mini grid market. The policy frameworks, among other regulations and plans, are expected to increase access to inclusive, modern, and clean energy services, improve energy security and climate objectives, and contribute to diversifying Nigeria's energy mix away from fossil fuels. The Rural Electrification Strategy and Implementation Plan was developed based on this document and was approved by the federal government in 2016 to pursue the government's ambitious targets which are to increase access to electricity to 75% by 2020 and 90% by 2030, with at least 10% renewable energy by 2025. The Rural Electrification Fund, administered by the Rural Electrification Agency, provides capital grants for up to 75% of project costs, including a technical support to rural electrification. The Rural Electrification Agency provides one-off capital subsidies and technical assistance to project developers in order to promote fast and cost-effective expansion of electricity access in unserved rural areas across the different geopolitical zones of Nigeria. The objective is to increase access to finance in order to achieve more equitable access to electricity, stimulate innovative approaches to rural electrification, and improve the living and social economic conditions of rural dwellers. In 2017, the board and executive management of the Rural Electrification Agency secured over 30 billion naira under the 2016-2017 capital budget provision. Since that provision, the agency has successfully contracted about 400 rural electrification projects across the six geopolitical zones with over 300 projects fully completed. Experts have said renewable energy has become the most successful combatant against the oil industry. Cleaner energy alternatives such as solar and wind power have become increasingly affordable and easier to access. So to ensure the sustainability of energy supply and subsequently the sustainable economic development of Nigeria, the government has to intensify the implementation of renewable energy and energy efficiency programs across the country. That's our program for the week. Thank you for joining us. We hope to be back with you next week. In the meantime, our inbox set file at channastv.com is available for your comments and your questions. You can also view us on youtube.com slash channelsweb. Do click the playlist menu and then click add file. From the crew here in Lagos, it's bye for now.